Now here's another method, which is totally different from the state space one and totally different from the level of excitation one. Although, of course, they all end up giving the same answers one way or another, because ultimately it's all the same thing. But anyway, this one I'm, I'm going to call the throw sequence method. And in that method, what you do is you write down the trick that you want to start from and the trick that you want to go to. And you just write down the throws. Um, this incidentally gives you the option, if you want to, of writing down a different phase. If you wanted to um, control how many beats there are between, say, these sevens of the 741 and these sevens of the 714, you just write down, the, you want these throws to be this way and you want these throws to be that way, and you just write them down, okay? And uh, you can find what the transition sequence, the possible transition sequences are using this method. Um, and incidentally, this method, it has no knowledge of what states are, um, except in a very artificial way. It doesn't know about ground state or excited state, and doesn't matter what the excitation level is, um, because it, it never enters the picture, really. So, um, we could transition from this trick of this phase into here or here or here equally easily. Um, I'll just show one of them, but they're all the same, really. Um, so I'm going to erase these for now and just say we're going to transition into into this directly, okay? With the sevens on every third throw, there's a seven, okay? Although these are seven four one sevens and these are seven one four sevens. Now you might think, wait, the, this trick has a different level of excitation from this one, so you know you can't do that. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm on it. All right, I'll take care of it. Just give me a moment here. So. Um, we write down the throws, and then the first thing we do after writing down the throws, I mean, you have to decide what tricks you want to transition between, but after writing them down, now we check for collisions. So the way I would like to do it here is I want to count up going to the left. So if this is a 7, this can't be an 8, can't be a 9. Oh, but you know what? There aren't any throws higher than 7, and this was already a 7, so so the sevens are automatically okay. We don't have to worry about the sevens. This is a four, means this can't be a five, can't be a six, can't be a seven, can't be an eight. So that's okay. And if this one was okay, probably this one's okay. How about this one? If this is a one, this can't be a two, can't be a three, can't be a four. Uh-oh, it is a four. This one and this one collide. They both land in the same spot. Um, and so that's not allowed under the vanilla rules, right? So this guy's got to go. The reason, the reason that we couldn't do it was exactly because of that collision, okay? But hey, we're okay, we found it. We better check another one here too, because um, maybe this one will also collide. So let's check it out. If this is a one, can't be a two, can't be a three, can't be a four, can't be a five, can't be a six, can't be a seven, can't be an eight. Okay, so this one's actually okay, and all the rest of these, they're okay, all right? This, there was only one collision. It was this four and this one collided, and that's it. So that, the offending four is gone, and we can see now what it is that we have to do to make it work. So these are the throws, and now what we're going to do is we're going to write down where all the arrivals are. So um, the seven is a departure here, and it lands at some time in the future. The fact that it's a 7 means it lands 7 later. So if this is a 7, it, this ball lands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That ball lands here. This is a 4, it lands 1, 2, 3, 4. It lands here. This is a 1, so it lands here. This is a 7. Lands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It lands here. 4 lands 1, 2, 3, 4. And 1 lands here. Okay. Incidentally, if I were to draw a line, oh yes, and there's one more seven, sorry. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? If I were to draw a line right here, okay, I've done all the throws up to this line, and there are four arrivals after the line, and this is exactly what is meant by this state, okay? There's an arrival here, 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 and here, and there's gaps in between. Okay, so that's, that is what the state is at this moment. 
But you know what? Th this is the artificial thing that you have to do to find out the state. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to write all the arrivals. So this 1 arrives here, and this 7 arrives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this 1 arrives here, and this 4 arrives. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this 7 arrives way in the future, and this 1 arrives here. There's, there will be some point where we're done. In other words, we have established the 714 pattern and we can presume all the positions are filled because we've been doing it long enough that, that we're into the trick. And also notice that I left some throws empty here, but you know, here we've been doing the trick here and so we don't have to worry about these. The question is, there's going to be some, some region of time maybe between here and here where we don't know where all the departures and arrivals are and everything, and, and that's where the transition is going to be located and what we have to worry about. So we don't have to worry about the fact that these aren't filled in. It doesn't matter. But we have to be sure that our window where we care about is wide enough to catch everything of interest. So let's look at this. Remember that we transitioned between the tricks at this line. These used to be 741s and these are 714s. And notice two things. Notice that there's this unknown throw right here. We have an arrival here, but no departure is specified. And look over here. Here's a place where there, nobody arrives. There's, there's nobody going to this place. We went through all the throws and nobody arrives there. Well, huh, isn't that funny? Do you suppose that we could take this ball and land it there? and then maybe it would work. Um, well, the answer is yes, you can. So what would it take to get this ball there? It would take a one, two, three, four, five. It would take a five. So presto, that's our transition sequence. And by the way, it's inside the, it, it, it's, it's not at the end. It's not after you complete a seven, four, one, and then you do a five. It's in the middle, seven, five, one. So our new, our, our idea now is we're doing 741, and then we do 751, and then we can do 714, 714. Okay, and that's, that's the transition sequence right there. So, so there you go, there's a transition sequence. But maybe, maybe you don't want um, just one throw, maybe you want some more options. Okay, so I, by the way, is, is this alone? Is that the transition sequence? Or would you consider this the transition sequence? Is a 5-1? Or would you consider 7-5-1 the transition sequence? It's up to you to, de to determine what it is that you're, you're thinking is the transition sequence. But we can expand this a little bit. Let's say for the sake of argument that you wanted to also expand um, the transition sequence to this throw. If we delete this one, then of course we've also deleted an arrival. I mean, this is no longer a one, so it isn't necessarily arriving here anymore. In that case now, we have two choices, if you will, A and B, and we have two arrivals, which could be here or they could be here. I mean, you could put this ball here and this ball here, or you could put this ball here and this ball here. This is exactly the sort of permutation thought that um, is associated with with site swaps, swapping sites. I mean, where was this supposed to go? And you can switch them so they land in a different order. I mean, that's the idea of swapping sites, right? This one was supposed to go somewhere, it goes somewhere else. That's um, exactly the permutation sort of concept. Well, we can write all of those possibilities explicitly. In order for this ball to land here, it would have needed a two, or for this ball to land here, it would have needed a one, two, three, four, five. For this ball to land here, of course, it's one throw after this one, so whatever this one needed, this one needs one less. So a one would land it there. And for this ball to land here, a four would get it this to go here, right? One, two, three, four. So we've generated this matrix here, two, one, five, four. By the way, this, note that this, this doesn't have, this isn't a 35 by 35 matrix, okay? This is a two by two matrix, so, uh, so that's probably better. What it contains is all, this is all, the possible transitions between 741 and 714 within the context of the phase of the sevens being this and you're only allowed two throws. Okay, that's it. 
And the way you read it is, once you pick a throw, I mean, suppose I decide I want to throw a two, okay? That means this ball goes here, in which case it cannot also go here, so the five is, is not a candidate. And if this ball goes here, you don't want this ball to also go here. So the one is out. That would be this ball going to there, that's a one. Okay? So in sort of a Sudoku-like way, once you pick a throw, you delete everybody else in the same row and column, and then that's your remaining trick. So you have two sequences now, either 2-4 or 5-1. 5-1 was the one that we just did, right? If we do 7-4-1, 7-5-1, 7-1-4, that one's legal. We can repeat this and we can repeat this. Or we go 7-4-1, 7-2-4, okay? And once again, we can repeat that and repeat that. And these are either this or this is our transition sequence, depending on how you want to interpret what is the transition sequence versus what is running the trick. Um, there's no other possibilities within the context of two throws. That's it. This is complete. Um, but maybe, maybe this isn't satisfying. Maybe you want um, more throws in your transition sequence just for the heck of it. So let's, for, for kicks, let's delete the seven. The arrival is still happening here, but now the departure is no longer happening because it isn't a seven anymore, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this position no longer has an arrival because we deleted the throw that landed there. So now we have three, three things that we have to think about. This ball could go here or here or here. So this ball could get a one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. So this ball could get a three, a six, or a seven. And then if it got one of those, it would land here or here or here. This is one later, so it's one less. Two, five, six, one, four, five, okay? So that's, that's all the choices right there. And once again, once you, pick, once you pick one, you delete everything in the row and column. Um, so for example, one, the first one that we came up with was the seven, five, one, right? If you pick a seven, that means you delete these, and you pick a five, which means you delete everything in the row and column, and then you're only left with one. So the number of choices now, it's, it's three factorial, right? You have three choices for the first one, and then two choices, and then one factorial is six choices. Okay, that's all of the tricks that there are. It's not three times three times three, okay? Three times three times three is 27. That's wrong because these throws collide. I mean, once you pick one, you exclude other possibilities. So within the context of vanilla site swaps, there are, in this case, for this particular transition, there are six choices. And once again, this isn't a matrix that's 35 by 35, it's three by three, and I can rattle off all six choices immediately by inspection. If the first throw is a three, it can either be three, five, five, here, let me, let me redraw this so um, it's neat. If I go three, six, seven, two, five, six, one, four, five. It could be three, five, five, three, six, four, six, two, five, six, six, one, seven, two, four, seven, five, one. That's all six choices. I can, I can read them off as quickly as I can say the numbers. Okay, it's so easy. Um, so that's all of the choices to get from this to this within three throws. Okay, so, so six, six, one. Okay, that's legal. What this column means is what throw does this ball get? And what throw does this ball get? Is this column and this column. This row means who arrives in this position. This row means who arrives here. This row means who arrives here. So the Sudoku, Sudoku sense is you want one in each column because every ball goes somewhere and you want one in each row because each one of these positions is filled. So this is the only matrix that you need to come up with all of the possible transitions between 741 and 714 in three throws.